in that ark is preserved all of the seeds, the biological diversity of the world that is now being erased from the planet by the waters of the flood. The search for Noah's Ark has fascinated explorers, archeologists, and religious scholars for generations. And now scientists have discovered strange artifacts inside what is believed to be Noah's Ark. After years of searching and speculation, this monumental find sheds light on one of history's most enduring mysteries. But what was found inside the Ark? How do these artifacts confirm what many have long suspected about this ancient vessel? Join us as we dig deeper into this incredible discovery and uncover the secrets hidden within Noah's Ark. The ancient vessel described in the Bible has long been the subject of speculation and mystery. In 1959, a significant breakthrough occurred when Turkish Army Captain Ilhan Durupinar took part in an aerial reconnaissance mission for NATO. While mapping a remote area in the Turkish highlands, Captain Durupinar made a startling discovery. Flying over an isolated region, Durupinar noticed a peculiar formation among the rocks below. He immediately took photographs of the unusual site. When the film was developed, the images revealed what appeared to be the remains of a large boat-shaped structure far inland at an altitude of 6,500 feet. What could a boat be doing so high up in the mountains? Could this be the legendary Noah's Ark? The location of this find is near Mount Ararat, the very place where, according to the Bible, Noah's Ark came to rest after the Great Flood. This mountain towering over the surrounding landscape has been the focal point of Ark searches for centuries. Durupinar's photographs reignited interest in the biblical narrative and spurred numerous expeditions to the site. The Durupinar site, named after the captain, sits in a region rich with historical and religious significance. It is a formation that almost perfectly matches the dimensions described in the Bible. The site measures approximately 515 feet long 86 feet wide and 51 feet high. Remarkably close to the Ark's biblical dimensions of 300 cubits in length, 50 cubits in width, and 30 cubits in height. This striking similarity has led many to believe that this could indeed be the remains of Noah's Ark. Explorers and archaeologists have visited the Darupinar site multiple times since its discovery. Each expedition uncovers more clues and raises more questions. Could this formation be the remnants of the Ark that survived the Great Flood? What other secrets might it hold? The Mount Ararat and Noah's Ark research team has been at the forefront of uncovering the mysteries surrounding Noah's Ark. This dedicated group, composed of experts from various Turkish and American institutions, has spent years meticulously excavating the Durapinyar Formation. Their efforts have brought them closer than ever to solving one of history's greatest mysteries. This team's work began with a renewed interest in Captain Ilhan Durupinar's 1959 aerial photographs. Believing that these images could lead to the discovery of Noah's Ark, the team set out to explore the Durupinar site with the latest technology and archeological methods. Their goal was simple yet ambitious, to find definitive evidence that could confirm the existence of Noah's Ark. Upon arriving at the site, the team faced numerous challenges. The remote and rugged terrain made it difficult to transport equipment and supplies. However, their determination paid off as they began to unearth fascinating materials that hinted at the site's ancient past. One of the most intriguing finds at the Durupinar Formation was the presence of limonite rock. This iron-rich material is significant because it aligns with the biblical description of the ark being made of gopher wood which some scholars believe could refer to a wood treated with pitch, a substance rich in iron compounds. The discovery of limonite rock suggests that the formation may have been shaped or altered by human hands, possibly to build a large vessel. But the discoveries didn't stop there. As the team dug deeper, they found layers of clay and marine fossils embedded in the rock. These materials provide critical clues about the site's history. The presence of marine fossils in particular is remarkable because it indicates that the area was once underwater. Could this be evidence of the Great Flood described in the Bible? Dating these materials has been a complex task, but preliminary analysis suggests they range from 5,500 to 3,000 BC. This timeline is crucial 
because it aligns with the period many scholars associate with the biblical flood. The combination of these findings, limonite rock, clay layers, and marine fossils, paints a picture of a significant ancient event, possibly the very flood that Noah's Ark was built to survive. As the Mount Ararat and Noah's Ark research team continues their work, each new discovery raises more questions. What else lies buried within the Durupinar Formation? Could there be artifacts or remnants that directly link this site to Noah's Ark? While these investigations are ongoing, another intriguing perspective comes from David Allen Deal. Deal presents a compelling alternative theory regarding the final resting place of Noah's Ark. Deal claims that the Ark did not land on Mount Ararat as traditionally believed, but rather on Mesha Mountain, located 17 miles south of Ararat. His hypothesis is based on a combination of linguistic analysis, ancient texts, and geological evidence, offering a fresh perspective on this age-old mystery. Deal's exploration of Mesha Mountain began with a careful study of ancient place names and their meanings. He noted that the name Mesha could be derived from a word meaning pulled out of the water, a possible reference to the Ark's emergence after the floodwaters receded. Deal also pointed to the name Naxuan, which he interpreted as Noah Zion, suggesting a connection to the biblical Noah. In his expeditions during the late 1990s, Deal discovered several geological formations and artifacts that seemed to support his theory. Among these was a high plateau at an elevation of 7,400 feet, which Deal identified as the probable landing site of the Ark. He found evidence of ancient human habitation in the form of stone foundations and remnants of structures that could have been built using the materials from the Ark. Additionally, Deal observed marks and scars on the landscape that he believed were consistent with a massive object being dragged down the mountain over time, likely due to seismic activity and erosion. Deal's theory gains further credibility when considering its connections to ancient texts. He drew parallels between his findings and the story of Utnapishtim in the Epic of Gilgamesh, an ancient Mesopotamian narrative that predates the biblical account of Noah's Ark. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, a great flood is described, and the hero Utnapishtim survives by building a large boat. This boat eventually comes to rest on a mountain known as Mashu, or Mesha, which Deal identified as the same Mesha mountain in his theory. Furthermore, Deal highlighted the significance of the Wall of Heaven, a term found in the Epic of Gilgamesh. This phrase describes two massive peaks that resemble a wall and are said to be the initial landing site of Utnapishtim's boat. Deal identified a similar geological feature on Mesha Mountain, reinforcing the connection between the Mesopotamian text and his findings. The implications of Deal's theory are considerable suggesting that the story of Noah's Ark and other flood narratives from the region might share a common origin or have influenced each other over millennia. By linking the biblical account with Mesopotamian literature, Deal's work provides a broader context for understanding the historical and cultural significance of the Ark. The broader context is essential because the story of Noah's Ark holds significant cultural and religious significance across Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. This ancient tale of survival and faith is a cornerstone in the religious teachings and traditions of these three major religions, each interpreting the story in ways that reflect their unique doctrines and cultural contexts. In Christianity, the story of Noah's Ark is found in the book of Genesis. It is a narrative of divine judgment and mercy where God decides to cleanse the earth of its wickedness through a great flood, but spares Noah, his family, in pairs of all living creatures. This story is often used in Christian teachings to illustrate themes of obedience, faith, and salvation. Sunday schools and sermons frequently refer to Noah's unwavering faith in the covenant God made with him, symbolized by the rainbow, as a sign of hope and divine promise. Judaism also reveres the story of Noah's Ark, which appears in the Torah. In Jewish tradition, Noah is considered a righteous man in a corrupt world embodying the virtues of integrity and faithfulness. The story is recounted during religious festivals and educational settings to teach lessons about morality, divine justice, and human responsibility. It serves as a reminder of the consequences of societal sin and the importance of living a life that aligns with God's will. In Islam, the story of Noah or Nu is recounted in the Quran with some variations. 
Noah is considered a prophet who was sent to guide his people back to the path of righteousness. Despite his persistent efforts, his community rejects his message, leading to their destruction by a great flood while Noah and the believers are saved. This story highlights the themes of perseverance and faith, the consequences of disbelief, and the mercy and power of Allah. It is an integral part of Islamic teachings and is often recited in prayers and sermons. The influence of Noah's Ark extends beyond religious texts into the broader cultural practices of these faith communities. For example, artistic depictions of the Ark and the Flood story are prevalent in religious art, literature, and music. These depictions serve as educational tools and sources of inspiration, reinforcing the story's moral and spiritual lessons. However, the story of Noah's Ark has also sparked debates and differing interpretations within and between these religions. Some scholars and theologians view the story as a literal historical event, while others interpret it as a symbolic or allegorical narrative meant to convey deeper spiritual truths. This divergence in understanding can lead to rich theological discussions and debates about the nature of scripture, the interpretation of ancient texts, and the integration of scientific findings with religious beliefs. One ongoing debate centers on the historicity of the Ark and the global flood. While many religious adherents uphold the story as a true historical event, some modern scholars and scientists argue that the evidence for a worldwide flood is insufficient. Instead, they propose that the story may have been inspired by regional flooding events in the ancient Near East, such as the flooding of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. The dialogue about Noah's Ark's historical and religious importance continues to evolve as new archaeological discoveries and scientific insights emerge. Scholars from different faith traditions engage in discussions and research, seeking to understand the cultural and historical context of the Ark story and its significance in their respective religious narratives. But what are some other interesting theories about the origin of religious stories of a great flood? In 1997, geologists William Ryan and Walter Pittman proposed an intriguing theory that could shed light on the historical basis of flood stories, including that of Noah's Ark. Known as the Black Sea Deluge Theory, their hypothesis suggests that a massive flood occurred around 7,500 years ago, drastically altering the landscape and leaving a significant mark on human history. Ryan and Pittman's research focused on the Black Sea region, where they discovered compelling evidence of a sudden and catastrophic flooding event. By analyzing core samples from the seabed, they found remains of freshwater animals and layers of soil that indicated the area was once a large freshwater lake. These findings were crucial because they suggested that the Black Sea had experienced a rapid transformation from a freshwater lake to a saltwater sea. The evidence pointed to a dramatic rise in sea levels, which Ryan and Pittman theorized was caused by the melting of glaciers at the end of the last ice age. This influx of water from the Mediterranean Sea through the Bosporus Strait would have flooded the Black Sea Basin, submerging vast areas of land and displacing ancient human populations. The rate of this flooding was estimated to be the equivalent of 200 Niagara Falls pouring into the basin daily for several months, an event of unimaginable scale and impact. The implications of the Black Sea Deluge Theory are significant for understanding the origins of ancient flood narratives. Ryan and Pittman proposed that this massive flood could be the historical event behind various flood myths found across different cultures, including the story of Noah's Ark. The sudden and overwhelming nature of the deluge would have left a lasting impression on the survivors, who might have passed down their experiences through generations, eventually becoming the flood stories we know today. Connecting the Black Sea deluge to Noah's Ark, it is plausible that the memory of such a cataclysmic event was preserved and adapted to the cultural and religious context and cuts of the people living in the region. This theory suggests that while the details of the stories vary, they might share a common origin rooted in a real historical event. The story of Noah's Ark, with its themes of divine judgment and survival, could have been a way for ancient communities to make sense of the devastating flood they experienced. Furthermore, the Black Sea Deluge theory helps to explain the widespread prevalence of flood myths in many ancient cultures. Similar stories appear in Mesopotamian literature, such as the Epic of Gilgamesh, as well as in Greek, Hindu, and Native American traditions. Each of these narratives shares common elements, a great flood sent by the gods, a chosen survivor, and the preservation of life. 
This suggests that the memory of a great flood had a huge impact on early human societies, influencing their mythology and religious beliefs. The Black Sea Deluge theory offers a scientific explanation that aligns with these ancient stories, providing a tangible link between geological evidence and mythological narratives. It highlights how natural events can shape cultural memory and become integral parts of religious traditions. But how have modern excavation techniques and technologies impacted our understanding of Noah's Ark? In recent years, the search for Noah's Ark has benefited from cutting-edge technologies, providing new insights and reigniting interest in this ancient mystery. Modern efforts to locate and study Noah's Ark have employed advanced techniques such as 3D scanning, satellite imagery, and ground-penetrating radar to explore the Darupinar Formation and other potential sites with unprecedented precision. One notable initiative is the Noah's Ark Scan Project, which has utilized these technologies to delve deeper into the Darupinar site. The project involves a team of international experts who have deployed 3D scanning to create detailed models of the subsurface structures. These scans have revealed intriguing anomalies that resemble the shape and dimensions of a large boat, consistent with the biblical description of the Ark. Satellite imagery has also played a crucial role in this search. High-resolution images from space provide a comprehensive view of the terrain, allowing researchers to identify potential sites and anomalies that warrant further investigation. This technology has enabled scientists to map the region extensively, pinpointing areas that might have been overlooked in traditional ground surveys. The findings from these high-tech explorations are fascinating. The 3D scans have uncovered a symmetrical, boat-shaped formation buried beneath the surface with distinct features that suggest it could be a man-made structure. Ground-penetrating radar has detected voids and cavities that might indicate internal compartments or rooms, further supporting the theory that this site could be the remains of Noah's Ark. The significance of these discoveries cannot be overstated. If confirmed, they could provide the first tangible evidence of the Ark's existence, offering a direct link to one of the most famous stories in religious and cultural history. These high-tech methods have brought a new level of credibility and scientific rigor to the search, moving beyond anecdotal evidence and speculation. International collaboration has been a key component of this research. Experts from various fields, including archaeology, geology, and engineering, have come together to pool their knowledge and resources. This multidisciplinary approach has enriched the investigation, bringing diverse perspectives and expertise to the table. Teams from Turkey, the United States, and other countries are working together, united by the common goal of uncovering the truth behind Noah's Ark. Ongoing research continues to push the boundaries of what is possible. As technology advances, new tools and techniques are being developed that could provide even more detailed information about the Durupinar Formation and other potential Ark sites. For example, Advancements in drone technology allow for aerial surveys that can capture minute details of the landscape, while improved radar systems can penetrate deeper into the Earth. What will the next phase of research reveal? Can these high-tech discoveries finally confirm the existence of Noah's Ark? In exciting discoveries, researchers have unearthed strange artifacts inside what is believed to be Noah's Ark. This discovery includes a remarkable collection of ancient tools, pottery, and inscriptions that have left scholars both intrigued and puzzled. The artifacts found within the Durupiner Formation provide a new dimension to the story of Noah's Ark and the people who may have inhabited this ancient vessel. Among the artifacts, researchers found tools that appear to be made from a variety of materials, including stone, wood, and metal. These tools suggest a high level of craftsmanship and knowledge of different materials, indicating that the inhabitants were skilled artisans. Pottery fragments were also uncovered, featuring intricate designs and symbols that could provide insights into the cultural and artistic practices of the time. One of the most intriguing discoveries is a set of inscriptions carved into stone tablets. These inscriptions are currently being analyzed by linguists and historians, who believe they might hold significant clues about the people who used the Ark in their way of life. The initial analysis suggests that the inscriptions could be in an ancient script, possibly related to early Semitic languages. 
If deciphered, these texts could reveal valuable information about the beliefs, practices, and daily lives of the Ark's occupants. The initial analysis of these artifacts has led to several fascinating theories about their purpose and origin. Some scholars propose that the tools and pottery were used for daily activities such as food preparation, construction, and maintenance of the Ark. The intricate designs on the pottery and the sophistication of the tools suggest a community with a rich cultural heritage and advanced technological capabilities for their time. The inscriptions, however, are generating the most excitement. If these texts can be fully translated, they might provide a direct link to the historical and religious context of Noah's Ark. They could offer insights into the flood narrative, the construction of the Ark, and the experiences of those who lived through this monumental event. Some researchers believe that these inscriptions might even contain prayers, records of supplies, or accounts of the flood itself. The potential implications of these findings are vast, for historians and archaeologists, the artifacts offer a rare glimpse into ancient civilizations and their technologies. They provide concrete evidence that can help reconstruct the daily lives, skills, and beliefs of people from thousands of years ago. Understanding how these artifacts were made and used can shed light on the technological advancements and cultural practices of ancient societies. For the broader public and religious communities, these discoveries are both thrilling and controversial. The possibility that these artifacts could confirm aspects of the biblical flood story has sparked intense interest and debate. Some view the findings as validation of their faith in the historical accuracy of religious texts, while others urge caution, emphasizing the need for thorough scientific analysis before drawing definitive conclusions. In a fascinating twist to the story of Noah's Ark, Leonard Simmons, a British Air Force veteran, made an extraordinary discovery. Among his collection of artifacts, Simmons found a 4000-year-old clay tablet that contained an alternate account of the flood story. This remarkable find adds a new layer to our understanding of ancient flood narratives. Irving Finkel, a renowned Assyriologist at the British Museum, took on the task of translating this ancient tablet. Finkel's expertise in cuneiform script allowed him to decode the intricate symbols etched into the clay. His translation revealed a story strikingly similar to the biblical account of Noah's Ark, but with notable differences that provide significant insights into the cultural and historical context of the time. Finkel's translation uncovered details about a massive flood, a boat constructed to save the lives of humans and animals, and the eventual landing of this vessel on a mountain. However, the specifics of the construction, the deities involved, and the rituals performed differed from the biblical narrative. These differences highlight the diversity in flood stories across various cultures in the ways in which they have been adapted and retold over millennia. The significance of Finkel's translation extends beyond its historical value. It offers a glimpse into the beliefs and practices of ancient Mesopotamian societies. The tablet describes the use of a circular boat or coracle, which contrasts with the rectangular design depicted in the Bible. This variation suggests that the flood story was a shared mythological motif adapted to fit the cultural and technological context of each society. Connecting these ancient Mesopotamian flood stories to the biblical narrative provides a broader understanding of the origins and evolution of these myths. The Atrahasis epic, for instance, tells of a great flood sent by the gods to cleanse the earth of human overpopulation and sin. Atrahasis, like Noah, is warned by a deity and instructed to build a boat to save himself, his family, and the animals. The similarities between these stories suggest a common cultural memory of a catastrophic flood event. However, there are significant differences as well. The Atrahasis epic includes a more detailed explanation of the gods' motivations and the specific instructions given for the boat's construction. The focus on multiple gods reflects the polytheistic beliefs of Mesopotamian culture whereas the biblical account emphasizes a monotheistic worldview with a single deity orchestrating the flood. These stories' cultural significance lies in their ability to convey essential moral and theological lessons. In Mesopotamian narratives, the flood is often depicted as a result of divine retribution for human transgression, emphasizing the importance of piety and obedience to the gods. In contrast, the biblical story of Noah's Ark underscores themes of faith, covenant, and divine mercy, 
portraying God as both just and compassionate. The story of Noah's Ark and the Great Flood has been a subject of intense debate for centuries. The historical accuracy of this narrative is questioned and analyzed from various perspectives, including those of religious scholars, historians, and scientists. Each group brings its lens to the discussion, contributing to a rich, complex dialogue. Religious scholars often approach the story of Noah's Ark from a faith-based perspective. For many, the tale is a foundational element of their religious beliefs, symbolizing divine judgment, salvation, and covenant themes. These scholars emphasize the spiritual and moral lessons of the story, seeing it as an allegory for human behavior and divine mercy. They argue that the lack of definitive physical evidence does not diminish the story's theological significance. On the other hand, historians are interested in the cultural and historical context of the narrative. They examine ancient texts, archeological findings, and historical records to piece together the story's origins and impact on various civilizations. For historians, the flood narrative in the Bible is one of many ancient stories that reflect a shared human experience of catastrophic natural events. They often compare the story of Noah with other flood myths, such as those from Mesopotamia, to understand how these tales have evolved and influenced one another. Scientists, particularly geologists and archaeologists, seek tangible evidence to support or refute the historical claims of the Noah's Ark story. They study geological formations, sediment layers, and fossil records to determine whether a global or regional flood could have occurred. Technological advances, such as ground-penetrating radar and 3D scanning, have allowed scientists to investigate potential arc sites more precisely. While some findings, like those at the Duru-Pinar Formation, have sparked interest, the scientific community remains divided.